Yo, what is going on guys? This is Jack Boy Dealer here today. I'm coming at you with a cool video today. Um, so this video is gonna be based on straight up just signing and deck. I always do deck theories, but today it's gonna be more so um, number, certain number counts, um, stuff like that, like why I'm playing certain cards and the amount of extenders, kind of like the science, whatever, like the theory behind all the cards I'm playing kind of thing. So I'll lay out my list, show you guys uh, what I side in and out, and then like also why, like I said, I have certain number counts of certain cards and et cetera, right? So um, I'll be doing that, a uh, little bit of backstory. I've been playing Virtual World for the last month or so, um, just because OTS qualifiers. I ended up going third place out of every tournament but one I played due to tiebreakers. The reason I was playing virtual world is because these tournaments usually have 20 to 40 people and they're fairly competitive because first place gets the Ecclesia map, top two get the uh, invite to the, uh, whatever it's called, the OTS, I don't, I don't remember what it's called, but anyways, the big tournament where it's in middle of September. I was going to play DDDs for that, so I just plan on getting my invite with virtual world and then go through the DDDs and the actual big event that was happening. But it didn't work out, so whatever. Last week I've been back on DDD and just experimenting with a bunch of different builds. Um, it has all been based around the uh, pure combo variant. Um, I've just been trying different ratios, different cards to play in the deck, and I just ended up circling back around to basically what I've been playing before for the YCS. It's just the best way for me to play in the deck, the best ratios, the most consistent way, and the best way to answer certain things. Um, there's the exception of like one card in the main deck, I think, or two, and then the extra deck has a few, a couple different cards. Anyways, um, so yeah, I'll be going over like, again, like side deck theory and deck theory pretty much. And uh, I'll show you, might even show you guys some combos, like just to kind of help theorize things. Um, I do completely play around the beer now if I have the option. Like I usually do have an extender in hand to play through it. If I want to like just straight up play through the beer with a strong board, I do have a way to do it now. Um, I will be getting right into this um, right now because there's not much else for me to say because I'll be talking a lot about, again, why I'm playing what, what I side in, etc. right? So yeah, I'm just going to dig right into this and I hope you guys are going to like this video. I'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, so um, yeah, here's the laid out deck list. Um, like I said, it's generally the exact same. The only difference is here. I move, bump this down to two and bump this up to two. So this was at one before, this at three. Um, I'll get into that while I'm playing this in a bit. Um, but I'll just lay over the deck list here, uh, just in case you can't probably see. It's three Kepler, three Swirl, three Lamiad, two Ghost, three Necro, three Copernicus, double Ragnarok, three Gate, one Swamp King, three Desires, three Allure, three Where Art Thou, three Talents, uh, called by Instant Fusion, one for one, Upstart, and Into the Void. So it's a 40 card solid list. Um, it, technically it's 38 because of Into the Void and Upstart and that's why I play this. Um, but let's start theory with the monsters. So deck building theory with the monsters. So um, generally a general rule, like if you're playing combo, it's kind of like a standard thing. You play three Kepler, you play three Swirl, three Lamia, uh, the three Necroslime and the three um, Copernicus. So they're all part of your main, your three to four card combo. So you want to max out on all of them. So I've always played three, three, three. I've never always played three Copernicus just because it's a pseudo, a pseudo, essentially a pseudo like Necro Slime, but it can like send the Lamy in some instances, but you really just wanted to send the Necro Slime. That's for an ideal hand. Um, so yeah, I just max out my um, important combo pieces, important combo pieces at three. So I'm playing three, 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 and that's just jet. If, they're part of your combo, you just max them out in this deck because this is a three to four card combo deck. So that's why I'm just maxing those out. Um, it's, a, it's a rule a lot of people like go by and know because this is DD, it's three to four card combo. So yeah. Um, so we're gonna go uh, hover over to this. So I'm playing two Ragnarok and two Ghosts. So it used to be uh, three Ragnarok and one Ghost. And I decided I'm just in a 38 card deck, I just kind of see this card a little bit too much. It's a good extender, but if you think about it, the deck's consistent enough. Just I found like just through playing it enough that the deck's consistent enough to uh, be able to get its combo pieces while being able, being able to search out an extender like Ragnarok or a Swamp King to play around something like Nibiru or something. Um, so I decided I don't need three and it's very easy to search this card out if I need like a utility card going second to break boards. 
or to just, like, like I said, extend. So I decided to cut this down to two. Um, and it's been working a lot better. Um, I don't see it as much. I still see it, obviously, but I, I still want to see it in my hands. I just don't want it to clog my hands, you know? So I put this down to two. It's been working completely fine. Um, I actually like it a lot better than three because I'm not playing Xyz and stuff. So it essentially works really well. Like I said, it's just an extender utility card uh, that's still really good to help. And it OTKs too, right? Like, in other words, utility. So let's move on to Ghost. So I bumped Ghost to two because... Um, there is times, like usually at least once a tournament, I'll, <laughs> depends on how many games a tournament, but um, I can go Desires and literally banish all my tuners after doing like an alert or something. And it really sucks because then you can't play. But if you have five, like if you have two Ghosts and three Lamia, there is like almost no chance of you banishing all of them. You always at least have an access to a tuner. And also in a 38 card deck, if you're running five copies of a tuner, it's pretty easy to hard draw a tuner, which you really want in this deck because sometimes you'd actually just don't have access to a tuner. So being able to just hard draw the tuner is uh, very useful because the tuner is how you get your combo rolling in this build anyways, in a combo build, uh, synchro combo build. So that's why I'm playing two copies of it. And this is also a really good resource management card. So if you open this, uh, if you open DD Ghost, it's really good um, to just, this obviously gets you a Hulk at some point to bring out the Lamia, but when you're using Ghost, it's really good to just send more Necro Slimes and Swirl Slimes for your follow-up and even another copy of Lamia, right? That way, if you get this in the grave or something and you special the Lamia off Hulk, you can send another Lamia when Hulk's, the Hulk summon Lamia is in grave. That way, the Lamia that you send off Ghost can actually use its effect to revive itself. So it's really good. Like Ghost is just really good resource management. Obviously, when it's banished, it can recycle any DD card. Um, so that actually gives this deck like a lot of um, grind power, right? So I just said bump this up to two. The last thing I want to say about the monsters is, um, so I generally, whenever I build this deck, any DD deck, I always want um, half of my deck to be DD monsters because this is a three to four card combo for the strongest result combo. This is a three to four card combo deck. I want half of my deck to be DD cards. So that way I can draw two to three pieces, you know, like hard draw them. That way I can be able to like search, like get gate to search the other one or just draw through or use cards like where art thou to just grab me the other piece I need, right? In a 38 card deck, it's really, that's why I always, almost always see full combo because half of my, like I said, half my deck is DD cards and everything else just re revolves, pretty much revolves around just being able to grab other pieces, right? So that's, uh, monster count is 19 and this is a 38 card deck because these two are just uh, one of draw powers, right? So it's a 39 card deck or 38 card deck, 19 monster count. That's half of my deck is uh, mon DD monsters. Works really well and that's always just how I built my deck around um, playing. It's just having half my deck DD monsters. So uh, yeah, that's all I got to say for the monsters. Um, so I'll move into spell and trap theory. Not as much theory down to the spell and traps, um, but Anyways, um, so it's pretty straightforward to just play Triple Gate and the one Swamp King. Uh, Swamp King is just your extender. Um, it just like having the most, a lot of the deck like Lamia and Ragnarok and stuff are extenders. Um, but um, Swamp King is also a really good extender. It's all you really use it for is an extender play or if you don't open Swirl Slime. Um, but yeah, I think if you want to play it at two, you can. But for me, I've always just kept it at one just because it's. It's really just an extender and just a way to access my fusion cards. Um, so yeah, I've always just kept it like this. And then when you go into the draw power, so I've always just opted to play three desires and the three allure. Um, so three allure is kind of standard in this deck. Um, this is a deck thinner. Um, you're playing 38 cards. Allure is just another way to just thin your deck and see your pieces. And desires, um, some people vouch to play two. I think it's very, I just don't think it's right to play two desires. I think if you're going to play desires, it's a three or a none of like, that's just personally me. Um, it's just for the instance, you're going to draw like two desires or whatever, right? Two desires off of desires. It's the balance just isn't there. Like the balance just doesn't make sense because sure it happens obviously. Right. But desires is going to help you out a lot more when you see it in your hand then it's gonna brick you, you know what I mean? So you're just, it's high risk, high reward, just play three desires and just, it's all, I've never just opted to play two because I like seeing desires, right? It's just a plus one, I usually have my full combo just drawing those other two, unless I banish too many cards, which playing desires, that happens, but it's just, just in theory, like it's just, 
been a thing to just play three desires, so that's just the way I like it. And um, so where art thou? Um, people ask me why I don't play Jack in the Hand and stuff. Jack in the Hand, like I used, to, if I have room, I'll play it. Um, but it's not for me. Where art thou is just a better card than Jack in the Hand. Uh, Jack in the Hand is a hard one to return. This isn't. This does have a requirement, but the thing is, it usually is always live. It's almost always live. Um, this plus Jack in the Hand is like almost full combo. Like if you open the both of them, but I don't have room to play Jack in the Hand in this build. And I've never found I needed it. It's more so, like, I've used to play it, but it's just, I'd rather, Where If Thou is always just, I put Where If Thou first before the Jack in the Hand because it's it's not a hard one to return. So if I open, like, Kepler and, like, two of this, which happens a decent amount of time because I deck thin so much, right? Um, it just It's just another two combo pieces, and I get my full combo right there, you know what I mean? It's just another way to, like, pair it with, like, a Kepler or whatever to just access my full combo easier, right? So... That's why I play, I've always just opted to play three where if thou, it's never failed me really. I mean, sometimes sure you get hands where it's like DD Ghost, Ragnarok, and where if thou, but in general, you just bricked regardless like that. So um, it's just really worth playing three where if thou, but if you have room, you can play Jack in the hands, like, like whatever, right? Like, but in my case, I don't have room for it. And then something I've gone over before is I'm playing, uh, the reason why I play three triple taxes talent and the one call by and the one instant fusion is because again with the five i'm gonna it's a lot easier to hard draw when you have five cards one of these in a 38 card deck so it's really easy to hard draw one of these and you have a high chance again you have a high chance of hard drawing any one of these five cards and these are all answers to hand traps and a lot of decks are just you're almost always going to see it like 99 percent of the like 9k 90 percent of the time you're going to have to play through a hand trap and these all five of these cards are really good answers to hand traps so at least if I can hard draw one of these, I am usually pretty safe if I can combo off because Talents will just let me, a lot of times you can like dummy people by just summoning Kepler thinking you bricked and when you have basically full combo, if they drop an Ash on this and you activate Talents to look at their hand, like they're literally screwed. It's just a game winning card, right? But um, that's more so um, through uh, kind of deck profile talk. This is theory, so like I said, I'm playing five because I can hard draw one of them and they're answers to hand traps. So that's why I play five of them. And the third, like I said, 38 card deck, you're probably gonna see at least one of them. It's It's unfortunate if you don't, but it's like, it's the best, like you're gonna see one of them more than likely. So, and the one for one into the like upstart, like this is all kind of, I just kind of went over why I play these and one for one is just, you're playing four Keplers or just an extender. It's another extender, right? So. In general, Lamy is an extender. You got three three extenders, two, five extenders, six extenders, and essentially, so your deck plays like seven extender cards, right? But your deck kind of finds a way to extend. It's like even Necro can be considered an extender. Um, so yeah, that's basically the theory for this, how I build the deck and why I'm playing certain cards. Um, so yeah, I will get into the extra deck now. Okay guys, so let's dig right into the extra deck theory. So there's not a whole lot to theorize about the extra deck. There is, but not like the main deck. Um, the whole theory behind the deck building is usually through the main deck. The extra deck obviously has a decent amount of theory too, but compared to the main deck, not so much. So um, let's start off with the fusion count. So um, you should never play anything less than double Genghis, one High King Genghis in a build like this. Reason being is because you burn through these two in one turn. This and another, uh, this third Genghis is either used, or sorry, yeah, I guess third Genghis because it's a small Genghis. So this Genghis is essentially only ever used for um, the follow up, or it's an extender. Like if you have, if you have. Um, the uh, Swap King, or you play a Vice Typhon and you use that first and then you have a Necro in your grave. Um, this is used as the extender card to play through Nibiru. Um, that's usually all it's meant for, but um, the third copy is, um, like I said, follow up and extend it through Nibiru. That's really all it is. You should never play anything less. Uh, just playing these two is not enough. Uh, you will not be able to grind properly with this deck if you only play two of this. So play at least the, the other copy of the Genghis. And if you can fit in the arc or something, uh, it's, a, it's a decent way to play through Nibiru as well. Um, but uh, yeah, not if, if you play Ghost, I mean, there's not much of a point because you summon Genghis, you summon Ghost with the Hulk, and then you got the same uh, outcome right there. So 
Uh, yeah, so that's the theory behind those fusions. And the behind Restrict, Restrict is like one of the MVP cards because it's, for one, it it's a free summon. So, well, I mean, for the cost of a thousand, it's a summon. Um, this card actually really does a good job at breaking boards going second because it's doesn't, whenever they chain block, it doesn't matter because he just uses effect to target or to suck up any monster uh, that's used its effect or any monster once an effect is used. So that's really strong. But his main purpose in this deck, obviously, is to stop hand traps. And he's also a free, he's also a special summon level one. So if you have this and where if you have instant fusion where art thou and this comes out, you just use where art thou and it grabs you a Kepler. Or if you already have Kepler, you get your other piece, you basically have full combo right there. So uh, yeah, Restrict is a great card for synergy in this deck and to help you stop hand traps, right? So um, onto the synchro count. So there's not really anything to be said about Alexander. It's part of your combo, it's a level seven. Um, there's nothing really behind Alexander. It's just an easy way to get the crystal in, right? So um, let's move to the level eight tier. So when you play this deck, um, you should always have at least three level eights. Reason being is because you'll usually go through, um, if you're playing the Gilgamesh package, you'll go through all three of these. Um, but the reason why I'm, uh, I'm not playing it, so usually I'll aim to go for usually these two, and then uh, I'll put out Shen Shen. So it's like two negates uh, with a floodgate and a pop, right? Be uh, target banish, right? And then I, for follow-up, I have the Siegfried that I can summon. And Siegfried's summon also triggers a bunch of uh, DD cards if I have like a scale or something, right? So Siegfried, I always leave the Siegfried for the follow-up play. And you gotta think, when you're building this deck for like the extra deck monsters, you gotta think of follow-up quite a bit too, right? Like follow-up is huge in this deck and resource management if you really wanna play this competitively. So usually, like I said, I just go these two, turn one, and then, uh, cause this is an Omni Gate and a solid monster negate. And then I'll go for the Shenshin or I'll just hard summon an Appaloosa. So they gotta, Appaloosa is really strong in this format and that's why I'm playing it. I'll get into Appaloosa more after, but uh, yeah. Um, so that's the reason why I'm playing the three level eights. Like I said, whenever I build a DD deck, I don't play anything less than the level eight synchros or three level eight synchros because uh, like I just said, resource management and follow-up plays, mainly just follow up with this. So uh, yeah, uh, that's why you should just play three level eights. And the Shenshin, uh, Shenshin, again, re really good for uh, recursion uh, on your on the follow-up. It's really good for follow-up, and it's very hard to deal with unless you're playing something like, uh, I'd say, yeah, it depend if you summon this with full combo, any deck's gonna have a hard time with this, but if you just have like a Shenshin on its own, it's pretty easy for decks like um, uh, Drytron and Bird, um, Tri-Brigade, sorry, yeah, Tri-Brigade to get around. They don't have too much of a problem with Shenshin, but if they have a bunch of negates on board and interruptions, then they can't deal with the Shenshin. It's just too hard for them, right? So yeah, Shenshin is just really, if you can naturally, you can naturally make Shenshin in this deck with uh, the Lamia and the Big Genghis. That's why I'm playing Shenshin and it's just way too strong this format. So it's literally an auto win sometimes against certain decks. Like prank kids have a problem with that. If you put it up with like, pair it with like a negate or something, it's just pretty strong. And uh, then we got Formula and Satellites. So there's nothing much to be said about these. Like, there's no theory behind this. They're just, you play Formula because you can, and then you play Satellite because you can, because they're very strong interruption cards. They're like, the, this is like the icing on the cake after you've done your full combo, because some people don't see it coming sometimes still. So it's really strong, right? And onto the links. So whenever I play this, uh, whenever I play DDs, this is how I want to build it. I want to go, I want to have eight slots for links and fusions. Um, I generally, I generally keep it to four and four um, because after that I have seven slots for synchros, which is usually uh, very good. If I can, I'll go eight, but um, usually the seven slots is enough. And uh, that's how I keep it. So I go four and four or maybe like four and three if I'm not playing the restrict, but um, I am playing restrict because it's just too good right now in this deck. And uh, yeah, so anyways, with the links, um, there's nothing much to be said about cross. These are your just generic link twos. There's nothing really, no theory really behind these. It's just part of the combo, right? And uh, these two have a decent amount of theory behind it. So Boral Sword, um, you wanna play Boral Sword because it gives your deck a very easy OTK game outing situations, right? So there's a lot of times where you don't wanna play into certain things or whatever. It's very easy to make a Boral Sword and just end the game without thinking, right? So it's like a no think card. It's like, it steals the game, like usually, once a match almost, Boral Sword will steal you a game if you're in a weird situation. 
Literally all you need to do is skip four bodies out, get another one out after, and then Boral Sword just swings for game. Uh, so Boral Sword is there for that. And the Appaloosa, so the reason why I'm playing Appaloosa is because there's a few reasons why. Appaloosa is extremely strong right now. Like if you can summon this with four materials or even three, it's a really, if you pair it with negations, like I just said, like I can summon Appaloosa with the two, two uh, negates on board. It's really hard for decks to deal with because uh, Appaloosa right now standalone is just really strong. A lot of decks, unless they have an imperm is really hard. Um, but yeah, it's such a good card in this deck I find. I've been testing with them. It's really just a good card to go into. And it's a way to stop Nibiru. So a lot of people have been like, oh, like, how do I make um, Crystal Wing, like, before five summons of this deck? And knowing, like, it's hard. Like, you can't, right now you can't, it's, you can if you open, like, two Lamias kind of deal. Um, you have to have a really good hand to do this, but then you're also, like, kind of going through. It's just not ideal. Whereas if you always have combo, you can go into this. Or there's also the rank six DDD, right? Like, the rank six uh, Hiking Caesar people try to go into, but again, like, if you're playing the synchro build, that's not the way. Like if you're playing the pure DD build, that's a good way to play around it. Um, but it is a standalone, pretty strong card. But um, it's just Appaloosa is just such a strong card right now. It's four monster negates. I'll show you how Appaloosa, how I play around. I'll show you the combo that I use. If I think my opponent has Nibiru and I don't have a way to extend around Nibiru, I'll do this. So I'll keep Appaloosa here. Um, so generally, our first we have our normal summon Kepler. Let's say. Um, then we go Fusion Summon, these two are in the, or Lamy's in the hand, whatever. And we use the Fusion Summon, it's with the Swirl Slime. You summon the Genghis, you banish Swirl. This is like your ideal combo, right? This triggers specials. Ideally, this is your ideal way to start your combo, right? So here you have four summons. If you think your opponent has Nibiru and you don't have an actual way to play around Nibiru, uh, if you want to play it safe, this is a really strong way because you're either going to play into it. A lot of the time, they won't hold the imperm. They might try to imperm the Genghis. It depends on the player. But uh, if they, you can, this is just the easiest way to play around a beer. You just literally go into four and you summon Appaloosa. The only way you can properly do this is having an extra, like you need like, not an extender, right? Like if you have an extender, you might as well try to play through the beer through your combo. But if you have like a random dead DD card, that like an extra one that you don't need, then this is how you do this combo. So you um, go Necro Slime, Fusion Summons, you summon the Big Genghis, and Lamy triggers, sending Copernicus. Lamy summon triggers Genghis, specials, Copernicus, I don't know, your random DD card. And then you just link these two off into a Hulk. So usually you're probably gonna have the, uh, like the gate out, right? So this is good for follow-up purposes. You're generally going to have your Dark Contract with the Gate out in an ideal situation. And then Halk will special a Lamia from deck. Let's just grab this Lamia. And you Synchro 9, and you go into a Shen Shen. So this is a really easy way to play around a Biru, but you have to be playing around uh, with your Shen Shen and Appaloosa. And you also need to have that combo with the Spare card, which is happens a lot in this deck because the deck's really consistent. So it's easy to grab, have all those pieces in your hand. The only reason, the only time I'll go for this if I don't have like a Ragnarok or something to extend with, I'll just go into this. If I like, it's like a game three situation. My opponent probably has an Abiru for me. I'll just go into this because this is really hard for my opponent to beat around because I still have a search next turn. I have these two in the graveyard, and this is a draw. So I'll have um, this option next turn, like two cards, whatever, and then gate searches. So I'll have three cards for next turn with a Shen Shen to, that's able to recur if they get rid of it, right? So, and like I said, Appaloosa standalone, if they don't have an Imperm or a Droplet, it's really hard for them to get around, right? So, uh, yeah. So that's my extra deck theory right there. And Appaloosa, I think you, you guys should give it a try because it's really working for me. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it's the easiest way to play around a beer. It's like no thought process, just straight up drop this. You have, you have another card to send with Lamy in hand. That you can summon off the Genghis when Lamia summons, you have that combo right there. But uh, even then, um, if you don't have the card, you can just send your gate. Genghis won't trigger, but you can still just make a, uh, a Shen Shen without the Howl. So it still works like that, right? So um, yeah, anyways, well, let's get right into the side deck. All right, guys, so the last section of the video will be based on siding and what I side out, what I side in, going first or second. And um, basically, what I have to cover the meta. So um, 
the, I'm just going to say there's three meta decks right now um, that I've personally experienced. Um, Virtual World, Virtual World, um, Drytron, and um, Tri-Brigade Zoo. Tri-Brigade's like the most meta deck. Like, it's everywhere right now, so generally you're basing... Uh, oh, sorry, and Prank Kids. So there's four, the four main... I'm not going to involve Sky Striker or Dogmatica. They're kind of uh, around the... Like, you don't see them too, too much. They are a meta deck, but you don't see them as much. Striker is like a more like a tier two, so it really depends. Um, so I'm just gonna keep them out of the uh, mix here. Um, so yeah, this is all, I generally will have like six cards each, at least six cards going second anyways, to cover each, each meta matchup. So that's how I build my side deck. And these are the cards I side out. So Upstart Goblin, Into the Void, Where Art Thou, where, three Where Art Thou's, Copernicus, One for One, and Call By. Call By is like the one I always try to keep in. But these are all, like, Copernicus is, you're just kind of trying to cut consistency at this point. And where art thou? And these these are terrible going second. And this is this is only good for game one because people will side drooling for you. So you take these out after game one all the time. Um, so these will always come out. And um, these, uh, like I said, Caught by the Grave is the only one I'm really going to keep. Um, so, uh, yeah. So these are, if you can't exactly see what I'm playing... Three gam the Gamma Package, Orthros, Pankertops, three Droll, three Evenlies, three Nibiru. And um, so uh, you won't see too much back row removal here. But the thing is, if someone, there's this, so people are playing like Goza Match and stuff, and I'm playing Orthros on the side because Orthros is a searchable out to any Floodgate. And then you can start, so a lot of people try to sit on a Floodgate and you can just go Orthros and then just play through and possibly kill your opponent, right? And the other one is Evenly. This is a really nice card uh, that a lot of people sleep on. Evenly is a blowout card to Tri Brigade, a uh, big time blowout to Tri Brigade, and a big time blowout to Virtual World because um, they don't have any answers in their decks to play around that. Um, this also outs like um, anti spell, whatnot, right? Like it's very, this is why I'm playing Evenly over like heavy back row removal. And then Pankertop is also a back row removal card, right? Um, so yeah. Um, just gonna lay these back out here and I'm gonna start off by saying what well, let's go jump right into like say matchups so let's say I'm playing virtual world first so for virtual world we're immediately gonna go for three evenlies three Nibiru because they can't always play around Nibiru coming kind of from a virtual player myself you can't always play around Nibiru so I'm definitely gonna be playing Nibiru just in case and the last card I'll be putting in for virtual world is Drolls. And all eight of these cards will be sided out because this is eight. So, um, yeah, not much to be said. The Evenly is a blowout. Minibiru, they can't always play around it. A lot of time they'll play into it. And Droll is really good for their moderate or brick hands. It's just worth putting in because um, if you have a moderate or like a eh or like a bricky hand, this will just stop them from playing after the Kinlong search kind of thing, right? Or even a Desire as you drop this, they can't use Kinlong or Lulu. So it, I mean, it's a floodgate, right? It shuts them out of using a few of their cards. So yeah, that's the eight cards I'll put in for them. Um, next, we're going to say we're playing uh, Tri-Brigade. Tri-Brigade, Tri-Brigade Zoo, whatever. So for sure, Evenly's will go in. Um, I probably won't play Nibiru because a lot of time, if they have a good hand, they can actually summon Appaloosa before five. So I'll put Gamma. And the last one will be Pankertops. So again, all eight of these cards going will be going out. Oh, sorry, I didn't say if I was going first against uh, um, if I was going first against uh, Virtual World, I probably just put put in. Um, so I was like, I'll put in the beers if I'm going first against Virtual World, just in case they uh, give me like kind of a blowout. Um, they kind of hand trap me really well, and I just don't really have much. At least I can have Nibiru for so when they try to go off, I can Nibiru them and play my turn. You know what I mean? So yeah. Uh, anyways, I, just, I forgot to go over the uh, what I was going first with. So, uh, what's the next one? Drytron. So going second against Drytron. Draw and Lockbird, and we'll also go Gamma Package. So we're just gonna go seven. The only card we're gonna keep in is Called By, just in case they have the Eva. Like if. Um, just if you, they don't like, you can at least stop an Eva or something, right? Or if they have like a droll for you or something, you can at least, like, you have call by there, right? So, um, anyways, we'll take all seven of these out and we'll put these in. Gamma's really good if they, really good if they don't have, if you see them use like an alpha and they don't have the ritual, then you gamma that right away. And it usually shuts out their turn really well. And, uh, droll is just, 
roll against Drytron. So uh, yeah, and if I'm going first, Droll will stay in. I can search Droll, um, but I'll keep, uh, these will come out as along with a Copernicus. And um, the reason why Droll is really good is because where if thou can search out Droll. If you already have combo, you search out Droll and they have to deal with your full combo plus a Droll. So that's what we're going with for Drytron. And the last matchup I am going to include will be Prank Kids here. So for Prank Kids, not all of them are playing around the beer. Uh, Pankertop's pretty good against Prank, prank Kids. And Gamma. So Gamma's good against Prank Kids. Um, if they don't have the pair, the only thing is that they have Parallel Seed, but um, doesn't always happen. And it's really good to hit their one, sometimes just hitting their one card can end their turn. I uh, just gotta kind of help bank on it, but at least you have eight cards to draw into here. And Nibiru, not all of them are, not a lot of them are playing around Nibiru right now. So you can just Nibiru them. Um, and if they, they do play around Nibiru, you have a pretty good chance to break, crack their board. Um, so yeah, that's a good thing. So uh, all, all eight of these cards will come out. And if I'm going first, um, like I said, Nibiru will just come in and then the upstarts and uh, like a Where Art Thou or something will come out if I'm going first against uh, Prank Kids. Uh, because like I said, I already, already covered this, Nibiru is just really good against combo decks. So yeah, it'll be my bounce back kind of card, right? So um, yeah, that is all I got to say about my side deck theory. Um, like I said, try to keep six cards for every, I have at least six cards to cover every meta matchup. And Nibiru's are, Nibiru and the Drolls are usually the, the cards I'll put in going first uh, to take out like certain, like random draw power cards like that I don't need, right? That are like Droll bait, droll bait kind of things. So uh, yeah. So that's it for today's video, guys. Um, I hope you guys like that kind of educational video. Um, yeah, um, the deck, like I said, the deck list for now is the exact same pretty much because um, I find it just really works really good, re works really good right now. And um, I will have some test, uh, other testing videos with like certain cards coming out, but uh, like Ready Fusion is actually like an interesting card to try on this deck. And I'll try some, experiment with some combos with that card and stuff like that. So. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys like this video, and I will see you guys later.